Many a times, the validations on your forms can become complex. This is where things go beyond just mandatory, non-mandatory, or a format that needs to be checked. Now in this case, with our systems, we can do custom form validations. Let's see how. So in this video, I'm continuing from the same application I built for simple validations. In case you have not seen this, just check it out. Basically, what I have here is a leave application where I have entities called leave and leave type. They have fields from the to date reason and leave type ID that is coming from the static entity. I made some of these mandatory just to make sure the user always provides this information. And thereafter, in my other video, I also prepared the leave listing and detail page where we added some more validations to make other fields mandatory as well. Now we're going to further modify this leave application to add custom validations. Now, first and foremost, what I want to implement is, uh, let's say when somebody is, is uh, deciding on a leave type, let's say if it's emergency, then the region should become mandatory. Now, this is something that we cannot just right away do it here because there's a condition. We only want to make reason mandatory when the leave type selected is emergency. Okay, so let's see how. So first of all, let's move the reason to uh, right under the leave type so it looks natural. Okay, so when somebody is selecting the leave type, immediately he will be prompted to provide region. If he's, the leave type is anything else, annual or medical, we can let it go. We can This can be non-mandatory. So for that, what we'll do is go into the save. Okay, there's the default logic that the platform helps us with. Let's just get ourselves some more space. Okay, now we'll put a custom validation, something like using a if condition. And the if condition will say if get leave by ID dot leave type ID is equals to entities, because I have a static entity. I can also use uh, the help here by using control and space entities dot leave type dot emergency so only if the leave type is emergency that's the condition actually one more thing we can write away do it here and the reason is empty okay so if the leave type is emergency and the user has not powered the reason that's where we want to maybe display a message or we can set the variable actually, that's better. So in the assignment, when you go, you are basically able to uh, work on the widgets. Each of these widgets that you have under form has a property. So here, for example, so these two properties, valid and validation message, we can play with them. So for example, the valid will become false and the validation message can be something custom. We can mention here that if it's an emergency, please tell us what is it. Okay, and thereafter we can just end the flow. If it's uh, okay, we can go ahead and do rest of the form violations and that, that's when the default logic will kick in to make sure mandatory, non-mandatory and other formats. And finally, we'll go ahead and create the leave record. Okay, by the way, we can also on the other side uh, undo the validation. So something like this, if it's true, let's just make sure that we remove it again. The widgets form reason. So in this case, when the user changes the value and provides the information, that's where let's remove the validation. I think the message can be empty or we can just leave it. If you do it true, the whole thing will disappear. Okay, and then we can continue. Let's publish and see how does it look. All right. So if we create the leave now and we provide maybe a from date, a to date, these things are mandatory. And I go ahead and select emergency and don't provide a region. I save it. I get my message and the field has been highlighted. So there's the validation property uh, uh, affecting how the field is looking. So valid, true or false can highlight this and the validation message. 
if I do provide a information like XLM, it will go ahead and save it. Now let's go back and do some more validations for leave detail. I think another one that we can do is while the user is providing the input itself. What I mean is as of now these validations are getting, getting kicked in when somebody clicks on the save. Uh, for getting the user experience better, maybe we want to do validations right away when the user is providing the information. For example, very typical to a leave application is from and to date where you know the to date cannot be lesser than from there. That would be illogical. So in this case, let's do that. So basically the form date is here and uh, uh, we will select the to date and on change property here. So any of these fields that you have in the form have this on change property. When somebody is keying in, let's say changing the value, that's when we can trigger a new client action. And here we can provide the uh, condition to do the validation. So we can use, for example, if, and with the platform, there are a lot of these built-in functions, a lot from date and time as well. We can do the difference. So difference date, we will put the from date on one side. You can see the overview here for this field. It basically returns a positive or negative number depending on uh, whether date one is bigger or smaller than the date two. So in this case, on this side, we'll put date one, our from date, and on the two date, the second date will be this. So if this field is less than zero, that means it's negative, which will imply that the from date is bigger than the to date, which is wrong. So if this happens, that's where we can do custom validation. Okay. So depending on this, again, we'll use the assignment operator to set the validation property of these date fields to true or false, which looks something like this. So get leave widgets and the to date val property and becomes false and the validation message will become anything that we like. So to date and be lower than from date. Okay. And then we can end the flow. We are stopping the user from continuing. So end the flow. And we can also on the other side, let me show you a trick. We can copy and paste just to speed up. Control C, Control V. And on the other side, we'll just do the reverse of it. So we'll say it's true and continue. And this way, we'll leave empty. Okay, so it looks okay. So depending on this, we added one more custom validation which checks the uh, validity of the dates. Let's publish and test it out. Okay, so uh, the application has been published. Let's launch it to test it out. So now if we add a leave where the dates are uh, in the wrong order, so 11 June and if I choose maybe 9 June, the two date, you can see immediately the validations kick in. And that happens while I change the, the values. So if I go ahead and pick it 12, the validation goes away, the message, the error message goes away and I can go ahead and submit. So with this, uh, the point is uh, using the on uh, change event, you have a place where you can write the entire logic. This could be even things that go on to get, you know, whatever kind of operations you have, all these available here, the widgets, run server, action and stuff. This can get really complex. You can call APIs and validate your fields. And this gives you a way to validate your fields and do your custom validations. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.